So I kind of broke my YouTube channel. <laughs> Okay, y'all, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrea, if you guys are new. What's up? You guys are returning. Thanks so much for coming back today. We're diving into what the heck I did to break my YouTube channel, what's been going on, how you guys can avoid the same mistakes, and fix yours if you're dealing with some of the same issues. So let's just waste no further time and jump right on in. So most people, if this was to happen, and obviously like figuratively, I broke my channel and I'm gonna explain what I mean in just a second, but figuratively what would happen if, you know, this happened to other, some other people, they may be okay with receiving some of the same stats or things like that. Like my views have been like crazy low all around the board on like actual single videos as well as just overall videos. Um, so many other things, okay, so many other things. We're gonna get into that in a second, but I could not just sit here and lay down and be like, you know what, no, I'm like, no, let's actually fix this thing. Let's see what's really going on. So I kind of dug a little deeper and I may even make this like kind of like a series to take you guys on the journey to fixing my YouTube channel with me. So if you guys want that, let me know down below in the comment section. But anyway, let's just go ahead and hop into what really happens. Again, my views are super low. And also what are some things that I've realized that has caused some of those things that have happened within my channel. So that way you guys can avoid those same mistakes. Okay, so, so first things first is people, including myself, preach about being consistent. And it's so, so true. And one of the biggest reasons why I've been seeing super low views, like I promise I did not buy any subscribers in case it ever looks like that, that's not the case. I literally had just went ghost for a minute. And with that, people kind of disengage. So it's kind of like, you know, out of sight, out of mind. And so it's one of those things where I realized that, but it's one of those things I don't necessarily regret taking that time off because I needed it. But I will say some of that was just procrastination overthinking. So there's that. But um, views have been super low. I don't feel like my channel has gotten the engagement. My comment section is not popping off like I used to be. And so I really wanted to fix all that. And so one of the one things that I realized as I was looking back through my channel was that obviously I had ghosted for a good amount of time. And honestly, I didn't realize how long I was gone until I went to my channel and I was like, wait a minute, this is, these are, uh, these are all the videos I have? Like what? Whenever I realized that I was like, okay, yo, we got a, we got a problem. And so starting to get back to consistent uploads and I, I can kind of get into another video in terms of like what's been going on of why I needed to take a break for a minute and kind of been overthinking and things like that. I can talk about that in another video. Let me know if you want that below in the comment section. So first things first is I went ghost for a minute and it was like a month to like a month and a half type of long. It wasn't just like a, you know, you missed a week of uploads. No, it was like, it was a good amount of time. And so one of the biggest things is we talk about consistency, obviously consistency is very, very, very important. You realize how important it is whenever you're not being consistent and you see like it in your numbers. So that's the first thing that happened is I went ghost for a good amount of time and just kind of fell into some overthinking and procrastination and things like that in comparison and stuff like that, which again, we can get into it in another video. Okay, so number two, the second reason why I believe my channel has kind of been like for a minute is because I feel like I really stopped making videos that I enjoy, okay? <laughs> and I had to, whenever I was like thinking of like what I wanted to talk about in this video, I really had to be like, okay, Andrea, like get deep. What's the real reason? Not just a sugar color reason, what's the real reason? And it's like, I do feel like I stopped making videos that I enjoy. And I feel like with me switching niches like a few years ago, I thought I had to make a certain type of content to get the results that I wanted to get, to get the, like to attract, you guys who are here now to be able to engage with you guys and things like that. And I thought I had to create a certain kind of content and I felt like it got a bit stuffy and I started hating it to be honest. And there was a, there was a period where I'm not gonna say I hated my business, but I strongly disliked it um, for a minute. Cause I felt like that was a thing that was like, not allowing me to live the life that I wanted and things like that, which is just literally so not true. And again, I'll get into that in another video, but me not feeling like I can create the content that one aligned with myself and also just aligned with you guys and resonates with you guys has been a big thing. And so really kind of taking time to really think that through and just like Andrea, what do you like to do sis? What do you like to do? Because I love beauty content. I love things like that. While that is not my niche, like why can I not incorporate that more into my channel? You know what I mean? Like why can I not incorporate some of the things that I love. But then also I will say I had to reshift my perspective on some of the content that I was creating and how I thought it wasn't fun. And it's like, okay, I saw a quote on Instagram and it was talking about like, if you ever see me talking to myself, mind your business because I'm having a staff meeting. <laughs> 
And so I talked to myself quite a bit in my head and I was like, Andrea, and I was like, hmm, I'm just kidding. Um, but seriously, I was just like, Andrea, the content that you're creating that you so say don't like, you can still make that content, but how do you make it fun? You know what I mean? Because you guys are here for entrepreneurial content, for business content, for marketing content, for lifestyle content. But it's one of those things where I feel like, oh my God, it's so boring. Oh, oh. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, but it may be very helpful. But then also, how do you judge that up? Like one of the people that I think about is like Captain Manning. Like teaching YouTube is mad, mad boring to me and watching it is mad boring. But she's one of those people that has really like judged it up and made it really fun to watch. Like her walking us through her channel. And so I'm like, okay, true, true self, true. And so anyway, it's like, how do you liven up your content with your personality, with the things that you bring to the table? How do I incorporate some beauty content with my entrepreneurial business marketing content? How do I do that? And it's really like, how do I incorporate my life into my content too? So I have actually been vlogging and it's gonna be trippy because you guys are gonna see this video and this video that I'm filming. Ugh. Anyway, but just vlogging more and being myself and being able to like actually get out there and do it because I feel like that caused me to overthink a lot. Like what content should I create? Well, oh my God, I don't wanna waste money creating content and it's not even the content I wanna make. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I would say that was number two for me was feeling like I had, I had to create content that I didn't like when just as a correction, it was a it was a mindset shift. It was like, Andrea, your content could be as exciting or boring as you want it to be, no matter the freaking topic. Like, so it's one of those things where I had to kind of shift my perspective and be like, listen, sis, sis, get it together. And make the content that you know is gonna help your audience, but also make it fun. And whenever I had that epiphany, I was like, oh. <laughs> okay, so number three, is something that we kind of already talked about. Imposter syndrome comparison and overthinking are definitely things that I felt like I've been struggling with over the past like month to two months, you guys. It's been interesting, interesting season of life. Um, it's definitely something I feel like I was overthinking um, my content, overthinking my business, overthinking everything. This is a common thing that entrepreneurs go through. It's a wild, wild and crazy ride out here, but of course it's worth it. But I do feel like I was overthinking, not feel like, I know I was overthinking within business, within content, within marketing, Marketing, within sales, within everything possible to overthink is what I was doing. And so I feel like with that, that kind of, I didn't allow myself to just create content, like just pick up the camera and start creating content, like stop overthinking it. And it's one of those things like it's like, Andrea, you know what works, you know what works, do what works. Like, and I, I would find myself digging into the behind the scenes of my business, like working like in my business. I can't remember which one is which. Work, yeah, working in my business, like getting back and stuff set up. And all that stuff is great. Like you need your systems, you need everything to be working on the back end. However, when it becomes an excuse to not really show up online and show up how you need to be, in terms of your marketing and sales, that does become a huge issue. And usually you tweaking a lot of the back end stuff, it can be a sign of you really avoiding the real work that needs to be done. And that was me. So yeah, there's that. So imposter syndrome, overthinking, comparison, and definitely some things that kind of got to me. Okay, here's another thing. Tim Schmoyer talked about this. He talked about how, you know, when YouTubers get bigger, when YouTubers start to grow, when they start seeing the subscribers and the growth and things like that that they wanna see, they watch less YouTube. And I thought that was a very interesting comment. I heard that on his podcast and I was like, yo, oh. He right. Like literally your girl used to only watch YouTube and I'm not saying you have to only watch YouTube, but I used to only watch YouTube. I did not watch TV, didn't care. I didn't have cable, any of that. And I feel like I've been so obsessed with like Reels and, and TikTok and Netflix and all these other things and not YouTube and like really like remembering why I absolutely love YouTube. It's something that I feel like did kind of take my mind off the content creation process and what it looks like. I feel like I was overthinking so much that I just didn't want anything to do with YouTube. Again, like I told you, I feel like I had like a crazy, not I feel like I did have a crazy burnout season with my business. And so, and like including, that includes YouTube and things like that. And so I, it's just, it's so much more that I wanna unpack in a separate video. That's the other one. It's just kind of like focusing too much on Reels and TikTok when that's not my, those aren't my hero platforms for a very good reason. Like YouTube is my hero platform for a really, really good reason. I love YouTube. And so it's one of those things where I just kind of had to refocus and shift my perspective back up a bit. Okay, the other thing, the last thing I would say, this is a bonus one, because I actually just added this one. <laughs> last thing I would say is, I feel like I was rebelling against niching down. Because I felt like my content was boring, and I felt like my content was like not me, I felt like I wasn't coming 
out within my content in terms of how I want it to come out in terms of who I am. You know, like when something's wrong, say your car is jacked up or something and you go and try to twist something and whatever and it's the totally wrong thing to be twisting and messing with when all you have to do is add windshield wiper fluid or something crazy. Like I feel like I was tweaking and, and touching the wrong buttons and stuff and not realizing this was a deeper mindset thing that I had to kind of get through and a, a deeper like content thing and messaging and branding thing that I had to really kind of work through in terms of that and being good with my messaging. So I'd kind of like go back to the start and relook at my messaging, relook at my branding and be like, Andrea, this is why you started. This is what you're doing. And I think the reason why I wanted to come and talk to you guys about this is because this is something that so many people deal with. So many people is like overthinking, procrastination, comparison, all these things on like within the online internet streets we got to deal with, but that's fine. But I feel like I was rebelling against niching down because I feel like it was boring. I feel like it was boring and instead of, again, like I said before, instead of me being like, Andrea, revolutionize your space within the content like area, like instead of me doing that, I was like, oh no, uh, I want to do something else. And it's like, no, you don't. Like, you know why you started. Like, I absolutely love coaching, you guys. I love coaching. Um, I love showing up on YouTube. I love content creation and all these things I kind of feel like I forgot I lost the love for. And so I feel like all these reasons uh, go into why I feel like my channel broke down. So some of the things I'm actually gonna, I probably will make this a series and talk about some of the things that I've done to fix my channel. Some of the really quick things I've done is I've updated my playlist. I don't know if you guys can tell. If you go on YouTube, you look at my actual like channel, you can see it's like all these different categories and stuff to kind of better help you guys sort through content and watch and get to the videos that you need for your business and for your life and all that. So I did that. I also changed my channel banner because I feel like I was being too generic and I'm like that's not what I know to do I know to like go deep get very specific I've really looked at my content strategy content calendar getting that where I want it to be actually planning out and taking time to do those things are some things that I feel like I've done that will help my channel tremendously and actually being more consistent of course <laughs> like I have an actual plan within my content calendar to be consistent the last time I went kind of on like a long spell was because I lost my video editor but now that I have one I really have no excuse at this point so if you want to join me on this journey to fixing my YouTube channel, getting my views back up, getting engagement up, getting comments up, all that stuff. Okay, so I say all this to say, like if you've struggled with this, if any of the things that I talked about today, I want you to know that you're not alone and that people who you think have it all together don't necessarily always have it all together. None of us do and if you struggle with this, just know you're again, you're not alone. Also the fact that it's not really about the fall. It's not about like the things that aren't working. It's more so like, how do we get back up? How do we recover from that? And that's where the true growth and the progress really happens. I'm not too concerned. I'm like, listen, we got this. We're gonna get our channel back at where it's supposed to be. Get you guys the content that you guys need and deserve and want from me. So yes, I do want to encourage you guys to check out. I'm gonna put some videos in the cards for you guys as well as in the description box for you to check out that I think will help you with your channel. One is how to design better thumbnails. That's one thing I've done within my channel that I really feel like will help tremendously because thumbnail and title is huge. Plus I go a little bit more in depth to kind of like what I've been going through in the season and I want you to check out that video as well. And I will link that or put the, the thumbnail somewhere up here so you guys can check that out too as well as in the cards. All right, you guys, so I love you to the moon and back. As always, I'm rooting for you. And I'll see you guys soon. So go ahead and comment below, like the video, and subscribe. Bye, y'all. Oh. As I was just like, oh. In the hospital room, when the doctor said sorry. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on.